Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So as you can probably tell from the title, today we are going to be chopping up a couple of my all-time favorite philodendrons, which is uh, pretty bittersweet for me. I know that it needs to be done, or at least I've come to... Nice. Nice. That's okay. This is all going to be chopped in a minute. Um, I have come to the decision that I think it's going to be best for me to completely chop these plants up. So that's what we're going to be doing. I will explain what's been going on a little bit. So I have one of them in front of me right now because this is going to be the first one that we'll be working with today. And this is my philodendron silver sword. As you can see, if she looks a little different, it's because she is no longer on her wooden plank that she's been trying to grow up for a little while now. And when I took her off, um, she's kind of like this. She's actually bigger than she looked on the plank, which is crazy. Um, so let's get to the nitty gritty. So if you watched, um, gosh, what video was this in? My plant chores, my last plant chores video. Uh, I was talking about how this plant just hasn't been doing well. The leaves have been constantly getting stuck, um, been getting damaged, like almost every single new leaf has been getting stuck and coming out damaged and it's just been frustrating. And then I started receiving some comments that people said that they thought that they saw thrips on this plant. And I was like, oh my gosh, no way. But I also wasn't very surprised because uh, as you know, I've been having a problem with thrips on my plants. And this was one that I hadn't thoroughly sprayed and I hadn't even used the Dr. Doom on at all just because it was on the plank. And it was just too hard to like get in there and spray. I didn't want it to get on the wall or anything like that. So I just didn't. And I just kind of crossed my fingers. I did wipe the leaves with neem oil, but honestly that doesn't really um, do much when you're working with a, when the plant is in a room where there's a thrip problem going on. So I wasn't super surprised and honestly, I'm a little bit relieved to um, have figured out the problem with the new leaves because thrip damage mostly occurs on new leaves. Um, so it totally makes sense that that's why they have been struggling so much. Um, anyways, long story short, I saw those comments. I went to look at this plant and sure enough, I saw the thrips. I'm surprised I hadn't seen them. Well, I'm surprised that I'm not. They're super hard to see. So um, good eye to everybody who caught them in that video. I had been checking this plant, but I just couldn't, I just wasn't seeing them. Um, so it was brought to my attention and I was like, okay, something needs to be done here. So I kind of weighed out my options and I could have left it and tried to treat it with the Dr. Doom. I, I could have found a way um, even on the plank or I could have taken it off the plank. Um, but I decided that since this plant has just like all, like half of this plant on the new growth side is damaged. And I just feel like I would prefer to kind of start over and grow new healthy leaves that are not uh, damaged by thrips. So that's how I came to the decision that we are going to be chopping it up today. I think that I might try to save a couple of leaves and I'll spray them down. Uh, so I'll probably water propagate a few leaves and then maybe, I don't even know if I'll, yeah, maybe I will do some wet sticks, but in a separate container because I obviously don't want to spread thrips to my current propagation boxes. Um, yeah, we're just going to chop her all up and then I will, I'm just going to kind of decide as we go, I guess. So I'm just going to get everything ready and we'll get started. Oh, also I am going to be completely chopping up my Florida Beauty after this plant. So I'll talk about that one once we are finished with this one. Okay guys, so I have my clippers that I have sanitized with isopropyl alcohol and I guess I'm just going to go to town here. Uh, maybe I'll kind of go through and decide about the pieces once it's all cut up. If there's nice leaves, then I will be keeping those ones to propagate. But if they're damaged, then that will be wet stick route, I guess. Oh my goodness. She's pretty thick. This plant was actually getting big. It's too bad that that happened. Oh my goodness. I don't really have a problem cutting up my plants um, if I know that it's for for the best. Um, like this plant, it was just, it just wasn't bringing me very much happiness because I was just concerned and I um, just felt crappy whenever I saw it struggling. So 
honestly, um, it makes me happier to be like proactively doing something about it, which I know is going to be for the best. Probably mostly be the lower leaves that I keep because they were the least damaged. Okay, this is where we're at. Look at how pretty. Oh man, this plant is so pretty. Maybe I should just keep the lower. Should I keep this part and just regrow it? Let's remove this yellow leaf and decide. I could and put it back on the plank. Spray it down for thrips. Should I do that? Mm, no, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it. I think I might actually put this on a moss pole next instead of the plank um, and pot like a bunch of different cuttings together. So we'll see. I've found that these root really well in water. So that's going to be the route that I take today except for the wet sticks. Those will go in a prop box of some sort. Um, pretty leaf. Close this. Okay, so I'm gonna divide these up into leaves that I want to keep and water propagate, and then the rest is just gonna get chopped. I think I'll keep this one. Basically anything that's not damaged. This is damaged, this damaged. I'm gonna be pretty picky because I don't wanna keep that many leaves. Okay, most of them are damaged. This is nice. It's nice. Also, any of the leaves that uh, have thrip damage could have thrip eggs in them. And I just really don't want to be dealing with that. Oh, this was a top cut and look at, it was trying to push out a baby. I can already see that it's damaged though. This is the leaf that a lot of people noticed um, the thrips on. Yikes. Um, nope, nope. Okay, so we only have four that I'm going to be water propagating, but look at them, they're so pretty. Okay, good. And then these guys, I'm gonna have a lot of wet sticks here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all the leaves off.
Okay, I'm just gonna peel off any weird dried bits because it looks like a weird dried out root. Those bits will just be more prone to rotting, so looks pretty good now. Now I'm gonna throw all of these um, and the leaves into some soapy water just to kind of clean them all. I will be spraying these off with my Dr. Doom thrip spray just as a preventative. I don't see any thrips on them, but thrips are so hard to spot you guys. So I will be spraying them, uh, but I will be doing it at nighttime because I don't want them to burn. Haven't decided where I'm gonna put them yet, but since it's daytime and there's grow lights on and whatnot, I don't want to risk burn. Um, so I'm just gonna do the soapy water for now. Okay, so they are just in this soapy water now. I'm just gonna leave them in there for, I don't know, a few minutes and kind of scrub the leaves off a little bit. Then I'm gonna take everything out. Okay, so I'm gonna start a couple of propagation containers uh, with these leftover Thai food um, containers here. I barely ever get takeout, but whenever I do, I'm always excited when they come in this type of container because I always reuse them. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna do perlite for the smaller one. This is all reused um, perlite, by the way. That's why it's in this bin. It's been boiled and dried. And now we're using it again. Same with the sphagnum in this one. enough of a layer and then I'm gonna use sphagnum for this one so I'll have to wet it but just measure some out I don't really need that much Okay, so I just wet the sphagnum and wrung it out so that it's not like, it's just damp. It's not too, it's not sopping wet or anything like that. And then the perlite, I added some water as well. There is like a very, very slight layer on the bottom. Um, but yeah, it'll just wick that moisture up. And it's gonna be super humid in these containers because we are going to put lids on. But let's just pop a few of the wet sticks in here. that's actually perfect um, so I just pretty much lay them on top and they will root into the substrate so put the lids on Okay, so I just found a vessel, filled it up with some water for these cuttings. Not sure where I'll put these yet, but probably somewhere near a grow light for all three of them. Um, I also did just want to say that I just used plain tap water. You can add a couple drops of Super Thrive. I just didn't this time, um, but I suspect that these will root up pretty easily. Okay, so this is where I put those cuttings, a bit of a precarious 
placement, but I'll probably be moving that um, just for now. It's there, getting some light. Uh, I just don't want to introduce it into a new area until um, I'm confident that there's not going to be any thrips on it. And then these guys I just put right there in front of my Plant Spectrum Grow Light. Look at the aerial roots from my Monster Albo. It's crazy. Okay, I'm feeling good that we got that plant out of the way. Um, it's been on my to-do list for quite a few days now, so feeling really good about that. Uh, let's go take a look at the Florida Beauty. Okay, so next we're gonna be working with my Philodendron Florida Beauty, and I am quite gutted that I am going to have to start this over again because I just, I just feel like I spent so much time trying to grow this into the plant that it had become, and um, oh my God, oh my God. I just feel like I was making really good progress with maturing this plant, like the leaves I was getting were absolutely beautiful. This is the newest one, look at that. It's a little wonky um, from thrip damage, but this plant, oh, it was starting to look so incredible, even almost reaching the top of the moss pole. But uh, what happened was that unfortunately the spray, the Dr. Doom uh, Go Green Botanics burnt this plant. You can see a lot of the leaves are burnt. I've already, I've already removed about three leaves that were badly burnt. Um, there's still like burn spots on almost all of the leaves, I think, honestly. And this is the only plant that that happened to. So it's just very unfortunate. Um, so basically, like I said, I removed a bunch of leaves already, so there's a lot of like gaps and I'm just not happy with how it looks anymore. Um, and there's just like thrip damaged leaves, so I'm pretty sure that the thrips are gone. Like I have not seen thrips in probably a month on this plant. Um, I mean, they could still be lurking, you never know, but it's been quite some time since I have seen any thrips because I did treat this multiple times. However, I just feel, I just feel the same way as I did about the silver sword. Like I just want to start it over. I want to grow a nice lush full plant. And if I cut this up and have multiple baby plants to work with in the future, then it's going to give me a more lush um, climbing plant anyways, because right now it's just a singular vine. So I am going to be doing the same thing, like keeping some of the cuttings, but, um, or keeping some of the leaves, sorry. Uh, and then just doing wet sticks for the rest. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, so for this one, as you can see, we have a moss pole. So I need to remove the plant from the moss pole. Let me get rid of this potting mat while we're doing this because it just keeps spinning. Okay, let me see. Can you see that? Yes. So I have wet this, so it'll be easier to remove the roots from. Okay, so this one's not really rooted in there, so I can just cut that off, which is what I'm gonna do. Oh, I cannot believe I'm cutting this plant. Okay, oh, this is gonna be, I think that I'll keep this leaf intact because it's not that damaged. Um, and we have a little cutie aerial root there already to work with. So this is my top cutting. Oh, that's so, so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put it on my potting mat behind me. And then next, this leaf is, okay, let's see if we can remove it. Oh boy, this one's definitely more in there. Maybe I'll cut it and then try to. Oop. Don't know why I feel like that's helpful. Oh, I can see it. Oh my goodness. Oop. Can you see the roots like all the way over here and there? I don't want to ruin this moss pole either. Obviously, I want to reuse it. Oh, uh oh, okay, I broke it. I broke the root, that's fine. I mean, I'll try not to break, but if I do, it's fine. It'll just reroot up. Okay, uh, it feels like there's 
another root like oh yeah there's a root way in there but it snapped that's fine though I think that this one I'm going to be growing as a wet stake because this is a really thrip damaged leaf uh, you can see at the end here that's what thrip damage looks like yeah not great okay so this next one I think I might try to keep this leaf as well because it's a little bit damaged but it's not bad and it's a really pretty leaf with a pretty mature shape I don't know if there's a better way to like get the roots out of this moss Oh man, it's just in there. I really don't think that there's a, a way. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay, so we've managed to preserve that root. This guy, so pretty, look at that. Okay, take that off. Oh man, look at that root under the tape. Crazy. So this is gonna be wet stick material here because there's no leaves. Those two. Oh. Oh my gosh. Look at that. It's crazy. I think I'm gonna cut this part's like dried out that's what happens if you don't keep your moss poles moist which i'm trying to get better with but i'm gonna cut that dry part off and then this all looks well yeah i'll leave it for now that root that's gonna be a wet stick and then oh that leaf is really damaged so this is going to be a wet stick for sure and then this little cutie leaf. Oh, these are both little cutie leaves. Actually, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep both of these as a cutting. Oh, there's a node above that. Should I cut that one off? Yeah, I'm going to carefully. I can see a growth point. Can you see? There's like a little growth point right there. So I'm gonna cut. above that oh, there's a growth point on this that's this is a very 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 tiny um, wet stick but it is possible you guys it is possible um, okay so this is the cutting that we're left with for this one those leaves look pretty good put that in here Okay, so for the wet sticks, I'm going to be using the jar method, and then I'm gonna put plastic wrap with an elastic over top, the same way that I do my corms. I've never done it with wet sticks, so I'm sure it'll work just as well though. Just going to place them all onto the damp sphagnum. These, I'm gonna cut off the leaves, of course. Bye-bye. And same with this one. So I have, oh, there's this tiny one too. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five wet sticks and then three uh, leaf water propagations, which I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna get some plastic wrap for this. Okay, so just put it over the top. Make sure it's make sure it's sealed. And that's what it looks like in there. I'm probably gonna put this in the Millsbow wide with the water propagations. So you can see I've just placed the water propagations right there. And I am going to put these guys just right beside. So 
So they'll still have really good conditions in here. Hopefully they root up quickly and I can <laughs> repot this plant up. All right, you guys, that is going to be the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed propagating these two plants with me. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I would love to chat with you. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you wanna see more propagation videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.